So how many regenerations of the master are there? It sounds like a simple enough question, but there's so much confounded contradictory continuity that makes the canon so complex and confounded that it's no wonder you're confused. But cast your cares and concerns aside because all that and more is coming up today on the Doctor Who Guide. The best box set that you can buy for Doctor Who Hey guys, welcome back to the Doctor Who Guide, where it's all about helping you grow your knowledge, collection, and connection with other Doctor Who fans. If you're new here and that sounds like something you want to do, then definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell to do just that because we have new videos coming out every single Saturday. This video really seemed timely after Big Finish announced that the Diary of River Song, I believe Series 5 box set, would feature River Song meeting four different masters. You've got the War Master, played by Derek Jacobi, the Crispy Master, played by Jeffrey Beavers, as well as, for the first time ever, you have Eric Roberts from the TV movie playing the master in audio for the first time, and you've got Michelle Gomez as Missy, so that is a huge, brilliant lineup. And this video idea was actually put forward to me by Rob, who runs the Ice Lord 99 Doctor Who YouTube channel. It's linked up above and in the description down below. He does a bunch of awesome trailers. Rob did research, sent it to me, and then I built off of his research. Huge shout out to him and uh, TARDIS.Wikia.com. Com. Amazing site. Now, spoiler alert, spoiler warning, we are spoiling a lot about The Master today. This is for people who have read, watched, and listened to as much of The Master as they care to and don't mind further spoilers. We will be talking about every actor who's ever played The Master and all of the regenerations. So if you've not watched all of the new series, uh, especially series 8, 9, and 10, then you're definitely going to want to um, watch some of my other videos that are linked up above. And there will also be story spoilers as to what um, episodes, audios, and comics or books that feature the master regenerating. We tried to keep them to a minimum, but I do want you to be aware of that. Before we dive into this crazy continuity, we need to talk about the difference between a regeneration and what I call an incarnation. And I'm going to need the help of my two friends. All right, so here I have the third doctor and the fourth doctor. The number of regenerations that a doctor has had rarely lines up or matches the name of which we call them. The third doctor is the third doctor, but he's only had two regenerations. And the fourth doctor we call the fourth doctor, but he's only had three regenerations. A regeneration is a process that gets you from one incarnation of the doctor to the next. For the master, it's going to be very simple. We've got the first incarnation through to the 13th incarnation. And I've got a list here of how many regenerations are left. That's really the point of knowing what a regeneration is. So we've got the first incarnation of the master with 12 regenerations left, the second incarnation of the master with 11 regenerations left, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the 13th incarnation of the master who has no regenerations left. So the best place to start is at the beginning. <laughs> because it's the beginning. It's too good of a pun to resist. So the very first incarnation of the Master would be the one who was born or loomed into existence, but that's a topic for another day. He's the one that the Doctor played with and became friends with. And this very first incarnation was played by William Hughes, and we first see him in The Sound of the Drums and then in The Last of the Time Lords. We see him as an eight-year-old Time Lord who was looking into the untempered schism, and that's the very beginning of when he first heard those drums and started going crazy and off to the dark side. There's also footage of William Hughes that was reused in the end of time. So another actor who played the first incarnation of the Master, but this time grown up, is James Dreyfus, and he played the Master in the first Doctor Adventures box set. This incarnation is supposedly the first one, and Rob points out that Susan does recognize this Master. It, depending on how long uh, Susan and the Doctor were on Gallifrey, they could have seen a couple regenerations of the Master, but it just sort of makes sense and, and feels right that this would be the very first incarnation of the Master, just an older version of William Hughes. Next up we have the incredible, irreplaceable Roger Delgado. He was the first actor to play the Master in Doctor Who. Did a wonderful job at being the very first Master that we got to know and love. And the thing is, his Master could be any incarnation um, from the second incarnation to the twelfth incarnation. The only reason he couldn't be the thirteenth incarnation is that in the comic Doorway to Hell, spoilers, we do see Roger Delgado's Master regenerate. That means he couldn't be the thirteenth incarnation of the Master because that Master can't regenerate, he's out of regenerations. If you don't consider the Doorway to Hell comic canonical, then the continuity would just be that Roger Delgado's master um, is the 13th master, couldn't regenerate, and uh, started to decay into the Peter Pratt master, who's coming up next. Before we get to Peter Pratt, there's an actor that I'm pretty sure a lot of you might not ever have had on your lists, and that is a man by the name of Norman Stanley, and he played the master in Terror of the Autons. 
Um, he doesn't count as a, an incarnation of the master because he just played the master in disguise. Next up, we have Peter Pratt. He played the crispy master that we see in The Deadly Assassin. He's the hooded master with, with a face that just looks, you know, all emaciated and black and burnt and he just looks like he's been left in the oven for far too long. Um, but he's known, you know, as the crispy master. According to Rob's research, the two doctors' audio from Big Finish actually tells us that he got burnt. This does mean, however, that the 13th incarnation of the master did have a normal looking body before it got burnt. We could really encounter the 13th incarnation of the master at any point now in the new series, or if you think that was Roger Delgado, then you know what his body looks like. But it had to have looked like something. Next up, we have Jeffrey B. He also plays the 13th incarnation of the Master, who has zero regenerations left. He's the second actor to do so. He has lots of other audio adventures, but then he ends up on Trocken with a plan to rejuvenate himself. The Doctor stops him, he body jumps into a Trockenite called Tremus and gets away in his TARDIS. Tremus is played by Anthony Ainley, who now goes on to play the Master. Anthony Ainley is still the 13th incarnation of the Master with zero regenerations left. This Master has a ton of encounters with the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th Doctors and inexplicably survives a ton of situations which should have resulted in his death. Rob even noted that he once shrunk himself down to like a very tiny size with his own TCE, Tissue Compression Eliminator, and had to grow himself back up to full size with Nubismatin gases. The last we see of the Tremus body on TV, aka Anthony Ainley, uh, is in the last classic series story, Survival and the master ends up on a cheetah planet. Yeah, you heard me right, a cheetah planet. Basically, the master becomes a bit peckish and puts a plan in place for the future. You just follow me for a second, you'll understand what I mean. In The Eight Doctors, which is a book that's written by Terence Dix, uh, establishes that the master swallows a death worm morphin. It's like a giant slimy snake. Why he wanted to do that, we'll find out later. But it says that he swallows a death worm morphin on a desert planet on the fringes of Mutter's Spiral. I posit that this is the same planet as the Cheetah homeworld. Both are desert planets, and it would make sense that he'd find this snake on the desert Cheetah world that he was stranded on. Except that the survival novelization says that the Cheetah homeworld is located outside Mutter's Spiral. And by the way, this information is taken from the TARDISWikia.com. Um, so I'm not entirely sure of the wording, but I still posit that outside of Mother Spiral and on the fringe of Mother Spiral could still be the same location and the same planet and the same home world. And I'd be pretty comfortable with putting that forward as a theory, except that the Eight Doctors book and the comic The Fallen contradict each other. And TARDIS.Wikia.com puts it really nicely. One account stated that death worm morphins were created by the morgues and resided on their home planet. That was in The Eight Doctors. Well, the Fallen comic states that they were indigenous to Scarrow. So either the Master swallowed the Death Worm Morphin while he was stranded on the Cheetah homeworld, or he swallowed it on the planet of the Morgs, or he swallowed it when he was put on trial on Scarrow and it was an indigenous snake just that just happened to crawl into his cell. Any of those three options are totally up for you to decide how the Master swallowed it, but the point is he swallowed a Death Worm Morphin and that would come in handy later on. But the Master now has a problem bigger than a snake hanging out in his intestines. Uh, it's the fact that the cheetah virus is slowly turning him feline. He didn't want this to happen. In the prose Stop the Pigeon, which is a crazy name for what I believe is a short story, we see the Master staving off the virus by uh, basically harvesting the life juices from elderly patients. That plan falls through, as does his attempt to get a new body in the book Primetime. An older, gray-haired Tremus body master uh, did capture all seven Doctors at one point in the computer game Destiny of the Doctors, and that's not really canon at all, but I wanted to mention it because it is the latest uh, footage we have of Anthony Ainley uh, playing the master before he passed away, so that's just something really special to see. At this point, we have to choose whether or not we're going to believe in the continuity and in the canon of the book First Frontier. In this book, big things are established, so it, it kind of does really affect how we look at the Master's timeline. So in it, the Tremus body Master uh, escapes the Cheetah homeworld and ends up on Earth, where he's able to make contact with a confederacy known as the Tzun Confederacy, or just the Zun Confederacy. And he makes a deal with them. He's like, I'll get Earth to join you guys if you guys heal me. So 
uh, he sounded like Timothy Frog. They said, sure, we'll make that deal. They held up their end of the bargain. So they not only heal him of the cheetah virus with their nanite technology, but they also take out Tremus's uh, troconite DNA and strip that away so that he's a normal Time Lord. Except they do even one more thing for him and they give him an entire new regeneration cycle. So now, in case you're wondering, we're still on the 13th incarnation of the Master, but he now has 12 more regenerations to go. How awesome is that? Except that shortly after that happens, uh, he gets shot in the back and uh, regenerates again. So now we're on the 14th incarnation of the Master with 11 more regenerations to go. Following that regeneration, things are looking good for this book-only Master that we know about. He's got a new regeneration cycle, he's, he's newly regenerated, but what happens for him next is bad. In the book Happy Endings, we find out that the nanites in his body start to fail and he is returned to his failing, crispy, regenerationless form. Form. The audiobook Dust Breeding, though, by Big Finish would seem to contradict both First Frontiers and Happy Endings because it starts out with the Tremus Master. He has an evil plan to power his TARDIS using something called a warp core. He underestimates the warp core and it attacks him, strips him of his troconite body and DNA, and reduces him back to his crispy, decaying form. I'm going to attempt to make these two seemingly contradictory tales come together whole and make sense. All that TARDISWikia.com says about the Master's punishment and happy endings is that he ends up returning to his former failing form. That's quite the tongue twister. I think this could mean the old Cheetah Tremus body. That makes things line up perfectly with the Tremus Master in the beginning of Dust Breeding, getting stripped of his Traconite body and becoming the decaying Crispy Master again. Got it? Okay, so in case you're wondering, we're still on the 14th incarnation of the Master, except once again he's down to zero regenerations. So that's pretty sad. But what happens next? This master just can't catch a break because the Daleks capture him and put him on trial for basically trying to outdo them at being the most supreme evil being in the universe. Now this is a point where I need your help explaining how the master gets from this crispy old form to the form of Gordon Tipple who played him in the TV movie where we see him on trial. You really don't see a lot of the master so it's not that Gordon Tipple couldn't be playing a crispy version of the master. He's credited as an old master in the TV movie. In any case, it, Gordon Tipple is probably not another regeneration. He's just playing another version of this 14th incarnation of the master with zero regenerations left. Also, Gordon Tipple is the first Canadian to play the master. So we've got Gordon Tipple on trial. The Daleks find him guilty because what else does a court of Daleks find you? He is then executed by the Daleks. Exterminate, exterminate, pew 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 pew! <laughs> However, the master has an ace up his sleeve. Or should I say a deathworm morphant down his throat. Comment down below with your favorite version of the master, who's your favorite incarnation, rank them if you want, and huge thanks to Rob Isler99, definitely check out his channel and TARDIS.Wikia.com. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!